What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I am stuck in fucking traffic, uh, hellacious traffic trying to go see a customer. So I'm going to talk about the next set of boxes on the are you ready to do steroids list which are uh, aromatase and 5-alpha reductase. Uh, really you don't need to go a ton into this so I figure I could just combine it into one, both of them into one video. Uh, again, like I don't think a lot of people are going to be terribly interested in all this science, but uh, for those of you who want to understand um, these two effects in the body, that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, first of all, aromatase expression is something that steroid hormones undergo in the body both naturally and when they are being introduced exogenously. So as I was saying in the previous video, the body's always trying to maintain a state of homeostasis. There are certain levels and parameters that it wants to maintain at all times. And so the way that a male, for example, well, both men and female, men and women, but primarily in the male body, uh, we don't produce our own estrogen from like the testicles or anything. So there's an enzyme called aromatase that will convert some portion of your estrogen, excuse me, some portion of your testosterone into estrogen. And this is how men get estrogen in their bodies. Uh, maintaining proper estrogen levels is very, very important. I've made a couple of videos on what happens when your estrogen gets too high or too low. And it is really a very uncomfortable set of circumstances. So um, when you, your natural production will always produce a certain amount of estrogen in your body. Ladies, your bodies will also aromatize some of your testosterone into estrogen. Now, obviously, in the female body, the primary amount of estrogen is being made in the ovaries. But the, the same rules apply whether you're a man or a woman. If you start injecting exogenous testosterone, then the body sees that you have a higher level of testosterone and it will start trying to produce more estrogen. It wants to maintain some sort of balance between the two sex hormones. And so if you're a woman, that's not really a problem. I mean, I guess if you're competitive, it could be an issue because uh, a lot of times women are trying to lower their estrogen levels to be as dry as possible um, for their conditioning programs. But if you're a man, it can be very, very problematic. So one of the things most notably that men experience when they have high estrogen levels is gynecomastia or gyno. Uh, this is a swelling of the glandular tissue behind the nipples and can also include the depositing of adipose tissue or fat tissue. Uh, effectively, you begin to grow breasts. Uh, I struggle with this uh, immensely. It can be caused when your estrogen levels are too high and it can be caused if your progesterone levels are too high. Um, so there are certain, certain compounds that are going to aromatize. These are typically called wet compounds. Uh, testosterone for one, Deanabol for two. Um, several of the compounds that you can take will convert into estrogen. And so in order to keep that in line, you have to combat it. Now, uh, a couple of things before I get into combating the estrogen. Not all men are prone to gyno. So I have uh, no guys from the gym that walk around looking like water balloons uh, a lot. They, they carry a lot of extra water on their frames because of high estrogen levels, but they never get the puffy, swollen, lumps behind the nipples, nothing. And so these guys can walk around with high estrogen levels with really not a whole lot of negative side effects. One of the things that's interesting and is a real pain in the ass for me is that uh, libido, your libido is strongly affected by your estrogen levels. My libido is substantially better when my estrogen is high. When I use a Remedex to knock it down uh, so as to alleviate my gyno symptoms, um, it tends to negative affect libido. So Derek from More Plates, More Dates made a video uh, talking about the different effects of high and low estrogen. And one of the ways that he can tell is with morning erections. He feels like uh, a morning erection is a pretty decent way of, of kind of a barometer of telling you where your estrogen levels are at. 
and that if you are sprouting solid morning wood every day that you're probably in that sweet spot. I have found, I have also found that this seems to be true. Um, so if you have a very low estrogen, you will have poor erection quality and if you knock it down low enough, you will lose all interest in the opposite sex. Again, I'm not gonna beat that point in this video. If you have any interest in that, you should look at, uh, I'll, I'll put a tag up here to the video about low estrogen. And then when your estrogen gets high, um, for the most part, the side effects are relatively pleasant aside from some people carry extra water weight. And that's where I, again, am strange. Like I'm very prone to gyno, but I do not carry I do not get the balloon face, the, the moon face, the Michelin man look. I have had estrogen levels as high as 173 picograms per milliliter, I believe, and had no really visible water retention. So for whatever reason, my body stays very dry, even, the ab even in the absence of wet, I mean, even in the presence of wet compounds. But I do seriously struggle with gyno, and if I had to pick between the two, I would certainly prefer the water weight. So, if you want to know if your estrogen gets too, too high, in my case, uh, I made a video called um, My Estrogen Turned Me Into a Pregnant Woman or something. I'll put a link to that up here as well. Uh, I began getting morning sickness, like horrifically bad. Like, I was a moody bitch and uh, had a lot of bizarre side effects from having a very high estrogen level. So that is what aromatase is, that's what it does. Again, it's an enzyme in the body that will convert your testosterone into estrogen and that forces you to com uh, combat that effect by using something like an AI, a, a, an aromatase inhibitor, which would be a Remedex, for example. Um, you could use a CIRM, uh, a selective estrogen receptor modulator like Nolvidex. You could use a suicide inhibitor like Letrozole. I will probably make another video comparing and contrasting the differences between those different medications to help you understand what they do. That is important as well because if you happen to be unlucky like me and accidentally get a hold of Letrozole that you think is a Remedex, you will knock your fucking estrogen completely out and have a whole host of negative side effects. So, that's aromatase. Um, if anybody wants a deeper dive into that, uh, we can go into that in another video. Secondly, uh, for this video, third on the list, is 5-alpha reductase. Sounds like a big word, sounds like uh, something deeply scientific, it's really not. So, one of the other things that happens inside your body through the endocrine system is that you have uh, testosterone, estrogen, and then you also have floating around in your bloodstream dihydrotestosterone or DHT. Dihydrotestosterone is usually what is responsible for the masculinizing side effects from various different compounds, especially testosterone. DHT is a motherfucker in the sense that if DHT binds to the androgen receptor on your scalp, it can cause you to lose your hair. If it binds to the androgen receptor anywhere else in the body, it will cause you to grow hair. So um, whoever set that little system up, God or evolution, is a real fuckhead because uh, it really is just miserable. Like, you know, who wants to lose the hair on their head and who wants to grow massive amounts of body hair, but that is in fact what it will do. This is why females cannot take testosterone in any kind of reasonable dose. They have to stay away from a lot of compounds that 5-alpha reduce if they reduce to DHT. Not all compounds will reduce to DHT. So, for example, if you inject exogenous testosterone and you have high levels of testosterone, some portion of that will aromatize into estrogen and some portion of that will 5-alpha reduce into uh, dihydrotestosterone. Um, and this is necessary for a number of functions. You definitely need DHT in the body. I happen to like the feel of DHT. Um, it, it's very potent, um, 
but uh, it is it, it is typically responsible for things like aggression, acne. Um, most of the negative side effects that you can experience from hormones often come from that DHT pathway. So there are other things that drugs can 5-alpha reduce too, and that's why you need to understand it or at least be aware of it. So for example, if you are using nandrolone, DECA or NPP, uh, the nandrolone hormone will 5-alpha reduce into dihydronandrolone. I think that's right. If I'm wrong, I will update the, the video. But it, it so it, um, it 5-alpha reduces into a weaker substance. And there is even some, uh, some, some science out there that suggests that uh, dihydronandrolone will, um, or is it DHB? Nevertheless, um, that it could be uh, protective of the hair, that you could in fact potentially uh, regrow hair because it binds to the same receptor as DHT and prevents some of those effects. Uh, it is also postulated that that is part of what causes decadic outside of its prolactin slash progestogenic activity that this 5-alpha uh, reduced version of nandrolone binds to the DHT receptor, outcompetes it, and then that negatively affects your erection quality or your ability to maintain an erection. Uh, I find this compound to be very interesting and it's 5-alpha um, reduced state, and so I'm gonna try to do, when I get some spare time, if I ever do, some more research to try to better understand it and what some of the implications are. If, I'm, if I remember correctly, and I don't study this extensively, but I believe that the same occurs with boldenone, that it 5-alpha reduces into dihydroboldenone, which I believe is a, a relatively sought-after compound. Uh, again, I'm not positive about that. Please don't quote me. Uh, the, really, the point of this video is just to explain to you that if you're going to start using steroids, you need to be aware of the fact that you need to know which ones will 5-alpha reduce, what they will reduce to, and determine whether or not you want that substance in your body. So, like I said, with nandrolone, uh, the fact that it 5-alpha reduces might be a reason not to use it. Um, if you're especially prone to decadic, and then, you know, somebody in the comments is going to be like, yeah, but you can use provirin to offset this, and that's true. There are a number of things that you can take to offset the effect of all of these different compounds, but that sort of you know, a secondary point to this video is that when you start fucking with your hormones, you cause all kinds of crazy effects. So you think, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do a 500 milligram test cycle because it's a beginner cycle. It's safe because it's a uh, naturally occurring, it's a bioidentical hormone. What could possibly go wrong? The next thing you know, you've got fucking bitch tits and you've got acne and you've got all of these things because you have spiked, because aromatase has, has spiked your estrogen levels and 5-alpha uh, reductase has spiked your DHT levels. And so you're growing tits and you're losing your hair. Holy fuck, <laughs> right? Not what you signed up for. Now, obviously that's an extreme case. Uh, I think it's probably very unlikely that somebody's gonna pin 500 milligrams of test E or C and grow bitch tits and lose their hair. But I mean, certainly for me, I will start growing tits at that dose, without a doubt. If I'm not using Arimidex, uh, I'm going to have full-blown gyno in a matter of weeks, if not a month and a half. So, definitely something to be aware of. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, understand aromatase, understand 5-alpha reductase, know what these compounds turn into and what the side effects are so that you can be prepared to combat them. Obviously, we've got, as I mentioned, the aromatase inhibitors and, and such to, to combat, combat estrogen. If DHT is a problem for you, there are methodologies for uh, combating that. Stuff like um, minox min minoxidil. Um, I forget the others because I'm not really into the hair loss thing. But basically, any, any, D, any compound that blocks DHT, whether it be... Uh, a cream or the, I think it's tamoxifen maybe I forget the the oral drug that you can take that is for uh, to combat hair loss but that's an even slippier slippery or slope because knocking your DHT out or blocking it 
as I said earlier, doesn't make you feel good and it negatively affects your libido, your erection quality, your drive. And so, you know, if push comes to shove and it's kind of coming to shove right now, like I'm, I'm definitely starting to experience some thinning, uh, some hair loss from various cycles and compounds and TRT and all kinds of shit. And I decided a long time ago that I'm not going to go the way of Derek. I'm not going to fight my hair loss with any kind of protocols or regimens. Like I'm going to let it go and then just bick it down and have a buzz cut and a beard. My wife is definitely not excited about that. And she has picked out, <laughs> she's picked out a number of wigs and uh, I might even try one of those just as a gag, but that's it, man. Like if I lose my hair, it'll either be, I'll either get myself a, a fancy looking rug or just fucking shave it because I don't want to play games with all of the other drugs and fucking with my DHT levels. Um, so there you have it. Hopefully this car rambling was uh, entertaining or interesting or useful in some way. If you have questions uh, about aromatase or 5-alpha reductase or DHT or estrogen and how to combat, prevent um, those uh, things from fucking your body up, feel free to leave those questions in the comments. Follow me on Instagram. You can DM me on Instagram for information. Again, I'm not your doctor. I'm not your trainer. I am just a 40, almost 41-year-old man now who likes to... Um, treat his body like a science fair project and so I'm happy to share my experiences with you and nothing more um, so yeah see you on the next one